Oh gosh, okay. Well, this is a mess. My room is a mess. I'm gonna put this plate somewhere else because it's got food on it. Oh. Give me like one second. Here we go. Okay. Sorry, my computer was about to die, so I had to. I had to uh, plug it in. Oh, that's kind of bright. Oh my God, Jason. Jason said, "I'm sorry, I don't pay enough attention to your Instagram." Well, that's your fault, Jay. I'm kidding. I love you, Jason. Um, Jason didn't know that I had a live stream going, and he was like you have a live stream? And I was like, yeah, I posted about it on Instagram. He was like, I don't check your Instagram. And I blamed him for hating me. It's okay. I know you love me. I feel like this is a little bit bright. Um. Oh. <laughs> yes. Why is this lighting a little bit too bright? Maybe I should like back away from it. Thank you to everyone saying I look pretty. Oh, my microphone is, I don't know if you guys could hear me. Sorry, my microphone is far away from me. Okay, I'm gonna put these here. I'm gonna close my door. If I lag at all, tell me. Oh no, because sometimes my Wi-Fi is not the best. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm so bad at life. Holy crap. Um, someone keeps asking if I have pets. So, oh, I should probably put uh, slow mode on. So. I don't have any pets. My dog died um, at the very beginning of the year in January. I feel like I'm very washed out right now. This light is so bright. Can you chill out? Um, yeah, my dog passed away in January, which had 2020 off to a horrible start. Um, one second, let me. Um, but we're getting a puppy, hopefully... Okay, I'm going to put it at, I'm going to put it there. Um, so we're actually getting a puppy in, in two weeks, hopefully. Um, do you guys want to see a picture of her? Mm -hmm. Oh. I can already hear my computer overheating, but here's, I don't know if you can see her. That's the puppy I'm getting in two weeks. Here, I'll, I'll get another picture. Oh my God, how cute. Stop. Look at her. And then there's another one. 
Isn't she so cute? I'm so excited. Um, I've just had a horrible year, so this puppy will be something to to look forward to. Um, also, thank you for super chatting, Jason. You didn't need to do that since you're already a member of my Patreon, but thank you. If you guys didn't know, if you want to get your comment highlighted so I can see it because sometimes the chat goes pretty quickly, um, you can super chat, which is the little, like, I think where you type the little money symbol is below it. And, um, it highlights your comment so I can read it in case I don't see it in the chat. Jason super chatted again. Jason, stop super chatting. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I don't check my own Instagram. I don't even know what I have posted at any given moment. Also, she's very cute. Oh my gosh. You're, you're Instagram challenged. Uh, it's okay. I barely go on Instagram anymore. Uh, I think this math, this, oh, I can't speak. This last month, I haven't gone on Instagram, like, at all. I'm, I'm just on Twitter. I'm on Twitter constantly. Um, but thank you so much for super chatting again, Jason. She is very cute. And hopefully, you will get to meet her in a Zoom call sometime soon. Um, Monica Fregoso. I don't know how to say your last name. I hope maybe that was right. Um, my dog says, hello, beautiful king. Hi, do you say hi to your dog for me? I love dogs so much. Oh, I miss having a dog. They're literally just like everything. They're like a life source. I swear to God, they're my source of happiness. So I can't wait to have my dog back in my life or a dog, I guess. It'll be my dog. But um, yes, I would just like to say, I feel like there's enough of you guys in the chat. Oh, Jason super chat again. Andy is right. I will keep doing this. Uh, here, Jason, do you want me to make you a... I'll make you a, I made you a moderator there. Jason, you are now our moderator. So you'll have a little wrench beside your name um, and you can kick people out if they're uh, doing bad stuff. Sorry, Jason, this is going to be your, your, your debt, your dead name. So like plug your ears. Um, Lily Soros Rex said, I sent you a message on Instagram, but I don't have Twitter. I'm about to follow you on Patreon. Oh, oh my God. Yes, join our Patreon family. We love that. Um, uh, I can, is your Instagram name similar to your regular name? I can go check. But if you send me a message on Patreon, I'll definitely see it. And Joshua, who is also um, one of my patrons, uh, super chat five dollars. Thank you so much, both of you. Oh my god. Um, oh my god, Monica. She just said I was the first person to say her last name properly, but thank you for giving me the confidence to come up to my family. Oh my god. Okay, first, is are you like Italian or something? Because Fregoso sounds like a like an Italian or like Spanish or something. Um, I'm Italian, so I usually pronounce those names sort of right. So I'm glad I uh, pronounce it right. And also. It was all you, all the courage and confidence you had to come out to your family was you. I'm glad I could be a part of your journey, though. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. Um, and I hope your family took it well. Love you, too. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Haley is very much so queen. I love your name. Uh, I love your videos. You are amazing. Thank you. Oh, Halsey. Oh, my God. I'm just <laughs> Halsey. I said Haley, didn't I? Uh, Halsey is very much so queen. You are very much so queen. Don't give Halsey all the credit. Um, Thank you so much. And Joshua said, hey, how are you doing today, Christina? I'm doing well. I haven't done very much today. Um, so this will be fun to do and give me something to spend my night doing because all my nights are just me watching TV with my parents. I uh, hope you're doing well, Josh. Henry says, hi, Christina. Happy holidays and have a nice Monday night. Thank you, Henry. Happy holidays to you too. Um, hope you're having a good Monday and hope you have a good rest of your week, little cutie. And Monica said fully Mexican over here. Okay, I swear they're all just, they're all similar kind of sounding last names, but I love that. Um, wonderful. Wait, when I drink it, you can see my eye through that little, wait. Ow, I just hit my tooth. Jason said, I'm just happy I got my funds back. 
I'm so dead. Yes, Jason, use that money. Spend it on me. We love that for you. Anna. Okay. Anna, stop. Um, Anna is also one of my patrons and said, one second, I'm going to keep this one here. Anna said, I still need to send you the present that I bought for you, Christina. I hope you will love it. And I'm, and I really want to get it. I really want you to get it before Christmas comes. I'm sorry if I'm so bad at reading. I'm kind of like, it's been a long time since I've read things. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm reading a book right now. Um, but I love you, Anna, for getting me a present, but I'm mad at you for getting me a present. Don't send me stuff. You guys do enough for me on Patreon. Um, but I love you so much. And hopefully uh, I'll get it before Christmas. If you send it to my PO box, I'll try to check before Christmas because I checked it today. Um, Erwin Meyer said, hi, Christina. When are you going to travel to Asia? I want to travel to Asia so bad. I want to visit India and I want to visit China and Japan like I just want to go oh I really want to visit Thailand that's I'm pretty sure that's in Asia I'm really bad at geography though that's one thing I'll say I'm dumb at is geography um but yes I would really like to visit Asia so bad um hopefully once uh, the vaccine comes out and we can um and we can like start traveling again uh, I would like to travel all over. That would be so fun. And Lilasaurus Rex says, uh, it's ding underscore Lily is my Instagram. I sent it a while ago. Okay, I'll go double check. And hopefully if you end up joining um, Patreon, I'll be able to talk with you. Uh, Andy said, same, Anna, LOL. Guys, stop buying me presents. You do enough. You do enough on Patreon. And by supporting me in like every other way. But thank you. I love you guys. Um, Brooklyn Hathery, Hatherly, 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 did I say it right? Uh, congrats on 200,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Honestly, I'm, I was up all night that night. So I saw like when it hit, <laughs> Andy said, never, Andy, stop super chatting. I feel bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um my mod olivia said uh i would like to make a suggestion where not to go um michigan uh fax oh and sierra oh my god hey sierra i'm a ph at blah, blah, blah. again can't speak i'm a patron but i'm scared to join zoom calls because i'm awkward but i love you honestly okay i get this so many people tell me they don't want to join zoom calls because uh, they're awkward or they're shy or they're nervous or they're anxious. Honestly, what I suggest is just joining the Zoom call and putting yourself on mute. And like, if you just like to sit around and, and like listen to what other people, usually you'll gain confidence eventually as, the, as it gets smaller and smaller. But usually what I tell people to do is to join and to turn off their video and audio. And you can just type in the chat if you're more comfortable doing that. Some people just type in the chat. Some people will turn on their mic and not their video. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. I want it to be like a safe space. Um, so yeah, Jason said, we won't stop, LOL. Also, this is because I can send stuff to your PO box. I'm gonna ban you guys from sending stuff to my PO box. And Anna said, I'm, I'm a stubborn Taurus. Um, I will do it anyway, true. I guess I'm just a super chill Virgo and yeah. What sign would you guys think I am if you didn't know I was a Virgo? And let's see. And Haley said, you're such an inspiration. I love your content and you look amazing. Also, your dog is so adorable. Love you from Japan. We are waiting for you to come here someday. Oh my God, from Japan. That's so cool. Oh my God. I can't believe I have subscribers from Japan. That's awesome. I can't wait to visit because I absolutely love so much of like Asian culture, especially because I studied so much um, like Asian philosophy and East Asian religions. Um, I absolutely love like the way Asian countries, like their philosophies, even their religions are like so much better than like more Westernized religions. So I don't know. I'm a big fan of like all the places in Asia. I mean, obviously not some of them. Some of them are a little like <laughs> North Korea, but yeah, I would love to come visit you in Japan. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you'll get to meet my puppy on a live stream someday. And Jason, oh, Jason, I already read Jason's. Yes, you guys are saying that. Someone said you should come to Hawaii. I really want to come to Hawaii. I would love to. Do, do, do. Yes, I'm a, I'm a Virgo. I'm pretty sure I have a Pisces moon. I don't know. My sister is really big into astrology and she tells me everything that I am. She'll send me memes and be like, oh my God, this is you with your, your Virgo birth thing and your, your Pisces moon and your Sagittarius rise or well, I don't even know what I am. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Um, Erwin says, I have an Asian country suggestion, the Philippines. I would love that. I've heard good things about the Philippines and I have a lot of friends who are Filipino or like half Filipino. So I would love to. My hair does look pretty today. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, oh, I forgot to post this on my Instagram story. Should I do that? Oh, stop. It opened to the puppy. You can't even see here, but it's like a little video. Oh, you can't even really see it. Oh my God. She just became a patron. Lily Source Rex. Also, I want you to see how bad my under eyes were earlier. Oh, you can't even see it. I'm so annoyed. Is it going to focus on it? My under eyes were so bad earlier today that I took a picture. And it was just like, I actually look like I'm dead. I'm going to post this on my Instagram story. I'm alive, but wait. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm alive, but I'm dead. <laughs> okay, where is my live stream? Mm -hmm. I got to get that. I like how it's just like a, uh, like a blurred screen. How do I share this? Okay, copy, and then I'm going to take a little picture. Say hi, everyone. Live streaming, celebrating 200K. Oh, I put 299. I wish I had 299K. Uh, 200K and opening um, packages from my PO box. Yeah, that seems good. And then I'm gonna put come join. And a little finger pointing down, maybe. Oh, we're going to put this face because I used to love this face. And then point down. There we go. And then I'm going to link. There we go. Uh, officially, uh, I don't know what accent I'm doing. Actually, I'm sorry. I Okay, I always say this in my live streams because I'll go into random accents and I'm really scared that my accent's going to like offend someone. But I mean, I don't want to do like a, a appropriate someone's culture. Jason said, K okay, last one. Jason, come on. I guess I support you using your funds, so. Someone said, I cannot wait until you get more subs than Caitlin Bennett. Me too. Someone someone posted that I had more subs than Caitlin Bennett. And I was like, not yet. I'm pretty sure she has like 500,000. But we're getting there. Remember, like, not too long ago, I had like 67,000. And she was like, 67,000? I don't pay attention to people with 67,000. And now we're at 200,000. Also, I have, I have food here. Um... Yeah, look at us grow now. 
it's actually crazy because I've talked to a lot of bigger YouTubers now. I have like YouTube friends now, which is exciting. Um, but I was talking to a like a really big YouTuber who has like, I think he has 2 million subscribers now. And uh, I told him that like I started off this year with 700 and now I'm at 200,000. He was like, what? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, I really want to get more though. And he was like, dude, do you know how long it took me to hit 200,000 subscribers? Like it only took you like less than a year. I was like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, that took me years, dude. Um, and I was like, well, I'm glad you say that because I get anxious about it a lot that like, oh, like I hit 200,000, but this is as like big as I'm ever going to get or my channel's going to die. Because there's always this stress that like content creators have. And it's if there's a saying, it's if you're not growing, you're act your channel's okay. If you're not growing, you're actively dying. So if your channel's not growing, it's actively dying. So you have a dying channel, which is supposed to be like looked down upon and like embarrassing and stuff, which I think sucks. Because if I had a million followers and I stayed at a million for the rest of my life, that's pretty exciting. But it's like you have this thing that you're constantly trying to reach something new and it's so stressful. And I find YouTubers just constantly chase numbers and I'm trying not to do that. But it's also like I would like to continue growing and not actively start dying. Um, but even that this this um, YouTuber was like, dude, just really be proud of yourself for for doing that in such a, a short amount of time. Uh, Cause he was like, he was like, in order for me to finally hit uh, 200,000 subscribers, it took years. So I was like, damn, I did it in a year. That's, I guess it is impressive, but I need to keep reminding myself that. Um, and people keep saying uh, Sam Collins. So me and Sam, I, I mean, okay. I don't want to like call us friends because I'm nervous that maybe he doesn't think we're friends, but I think we're friends. <laughs> Um, I, me and Sam Collins, I would say we're YouTube friends at the moment, but we're planning on meeting up, um, in the new year so we can be real people friends. Um, I'm so excited to meet him. Uh, and I'm really, uh, I was about to say, and, and I'm really excited to meet his fiance, um, because she's awesome. And I've watched so many videos of the two of them. So exciting. Oh my God. Yes, because uh, his fiance is from Canada. So he's coming to Canada um, to spend time with her. He has to get like tested and then fly over and quarantine and stuff. So we're, I think we're both going to get tested and then try to like meet up or something. Uh, so yeah, that's so excited because I was like, I don't know. He's such a cool dude and he's so nice and I can't wait to meet like them as a couple too. Always oh, so exciting. Oh, I love them so much. And I, I showed him a picture of my new puppy and I was like, maybe I will bring my new puppy if I have it and he can meet my new puppy. Um, someone just told me to do <laughs> ASMR. Yeah. Inaudible happy noises. <laughs> uh, yes. We don't want to see your stats homework, Jason. It'll give me anxiety. I have math anxiety. Should I take a bite of my sandwich? I switched my major in university specifically because I didn't want to take a stats course. Okay. I think I would like to start opening up some, uh, it's uh, an egg salad sandwich. My mommy made it for me. So 
I like to open up these. I try not to show people's addresses because that's, of course. Um, but this one is, it's really cute because whoever sent it drew like little, little like rainbows on it. And um, actually, funny enough, both of these have little rainbows on them. I don't know how to say your name, but I guess I don't know if it's like an actual name or if it's just like a like Timya, Timya Love. Hi Kang, I love you. And you have gotten me through so much. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear. Well, I'm glad that some of my videos have helped you through some hard times. I know this year's been really hard for a lot of people, and that makes me really happy. I love you too. Thank you. Um But yeah, both of these have both of these have rainbows on them, which is super cute. Um, Yusuf Dunphy says, also your last name reminds me of Phil Dunphy from Modern Family. Have you seen the David Pakman show? Also have one of your, wait, have one of your upcoming videos that are next to be about anti-Semitism because we all oppose to hatred facts. Um, I've been thinking about doing a, a video about anti-Semitism, but... I haven't done enough research on it yet, but I know it's getting really bad in the United States. Um, and I haven't seen the David Pakman show. I don't know what that is. Should I watch it? Um, but yes, if that's something that people would want me to do, um, I would definitely be interested in doing a video about anti-Semitism. It's just, it's hard because I'm not Jewish, so I don't really like know it firsthand or like understand it on like a personal level but i could definitely talk about it okay which letter should we open first this one maybe this one is from san jose california do i want to say it like a white person is it like san jose <laughs> jalapenos i don't want to rip the letter I also never know. Perfect. Okay. I was, just, I was literally just about to say, I never know if people want me to like read their letters out loud. So I kind of like read them a bit beforehand, but they put open on cam. If open on cam, if you want, I don't know. Perfect. This is, says, dear my king. This is story time with Christina. Dear my king. I think you are the coolest person ever. I'm young and new to politics, but you make me really interested in it. I love all of your videos and think you are super funny. I suck at writing, so if I were to write you again, I would use my computer. I write stories about cool stuff and would love it if you if I could share my writing with you. I would also love to be your pen pal. It would be awesome to write, write to each other about politics and having mental health issues from one broken gay to another. Love you, Ansley De, De Maria. De Maria. P.S. You are awesome, and sorry if I spelled stuff wrong. Oh my god, don't worry. I love how people apologize for that stuff. Don't worry, I'm literally almost basically illiterate. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to use proper grammar, so um, this is so cute. Oh my god. Thank you, Ainsley. Ainsley? I think it's Ansley or Ainsley. Um, I would love to get back to you. Um, I always ask people if they did write me to like when this gets posted, just comment under the video. Arthur Day says, Hey King, quick, quick, quick question. Heard of long, wait, heard of long Furbies? Furbies. But those like those toys that we used to have in the 90s. Question mark, question mark. Because I used to have a Furby when I was a kid, but what's heard of long Furbies? I don't know what that is. And um, Maury Fuentes says, I, I support your videos from Guatemala. That's awesome. I love hearing where you guys are from because it's so cool. Um, um, that I have like subscribers from all over. But yes, thank you, Ainsley, for this. This is so cute. I dropped the envelope. I'm going to find it. Come back here.
That was such a cute letter. Oh, I love, I love, love, love. Okay. Next letter. Pretty sure this is from New York. Sorry, my nose is really itchy. Hi, Kylie. Oh, I really don't want to rip the... Ooh, Lisa Gunther says, Christina, completely obsessed with your videos and your strength and courage. You've brought so much truth to light and definitely opened my eyes on so many topics. I just adore you. Oh, that's so sweet, Lisa. Thank you so much. I'm always surprised when people are like, I don't know, sometimes I think the things I say are so like non-revolutionary, but I feel like for a lot of people, I'm I'm so glad I'm like helping others. Sometimes I question my own reality. Okay, this letter. I won't read it out loud because the person specifically asked me not to. It just says, if you go live with my letter, please don't read it out loud. It's pretty personal. So, this is very cute. I just wonder, I think it's from New York. I'm pretty sure this is from New York. Um, I'm not 100%. But I'll, I'll read it on my own free time, I guess. Um, oh, is there two letters? Oh, there's two letters. Oh, okay. So <laughs> she said, if you ever open this on live, I'm okay with you reading this one. Oh, this on there. Much love. So we can read this one. Yay. It says, hi, King, I'm Kathleen and I adore your videos. No joke, I watch them for hours on end. I love your, I love your coming out story. Also, okay, first of all, this writing is like so beautiful. This is like really pretty writing. No joke, I watch them for hours on end. I love your coming out story and it helped me figure out a lot of who I was. I know, you're, I know you were very nervous about it, but I can imagine it's helped so many people. You've also inspired me to educate myself in politics and be a kind person. You're such a ray of light to so many people, including me, and I hope to see many more videos of you. Love from your 16-year-old cutie, Kathleen. Oh, that's so cute. That makes me so happy. And look, they made little... They made a little gay flag. And... Oopsies. It says mini pride flag. And then it says mini pansexual flag. And then it says mini bisexual flag. I love that so much. Thank you so much. I'm pretty sure these are both from Kathleen, right? Yeah. Thank you so much, Kathleen. You're the cutest little bean in the world. And I can't wait to read your other letter. Not on the live. Um, but that's so awesome. Thank you so much for writing me. <laughs> I love these. So oh, cute. Okay, now we got big packages. Um, I, pro I might need my knife. Where's my switchblade? Also, Arthur, Arthur wrote me. Arthur Day said, it's a Furby that's long. There's a lesbian YouTuber, Strange Ions, Eons, who has um, one named Thursday. I'm getting one soon with uh, the name Nebula or Nebby. That's so cute. Also, okay, so I don't know how to pronounce... Uh, that YouTuber's name, Strange Ions or Eons, but I've been watching them for like a few years since they started their channel. And I was a big fan, but haven't watched any, any of their videos like recently. But that's so interesting. It's a Furby that's long. Interesting. Um, the Hanged Woman said, Hi, Christina from Vancouver, Canada. Woo, Canada. Love you. I always watch your videos on autoplay on the weekend while partying with my husband. You're so interesting and funny. Love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh my God. That makes me so happy. I love my Canadian babies. And uh, that's so cool. Maybe one day when I'm in Vancouver visiting, I was supposed to move there. But you know, the world got in the way. Um, but yeah, maybe one day we'll get to meet. Sending love back from 
the capital. And also, thank you so much for your super chat. You're so sweet. I'm glad you and your husband get to enjoy me together. I love hearing that when like people who are my age or older enjoy my videos as well. I don't know where my switchblade is, but I'll try to cut it open. Oh, my little eyebrow scissors. I'll try to cut it open. <laughs> um, trying to see where this is from, too. Okay, there's a little gift and there's a, oh, there's another super chat. Maybe Rocks Lightning Shades uh, super chatted $34. Oh my gosh, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate and love you. Yeah, I, yeah, Jason said $34 and no message. That's That's a real dedication. I love you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, this is so cute. The letter has like a little... Little snowflake uh, thing to close it. Do, do, do. I don't know if she wants me to read this because it doesn't specify, um, but I think it has to do with the present. So it makes sense if I read it. Um, yeah, like if a lot of you guys don't know, okay, it's hard to say it loud without like crying, but um, one of my best friends passed away this, well, I guess it was in November. So this past month um, and I posted it on like a few on like a few of my social medias just to let, let everyone know that I was gonna this why that's why I haven't posted too many um stuff on I can't put words together I haven't posted too much on YouTube which is uh very unfortunate because I know you guys want videos and everything so I'm gonna start trying to post a lot more in December because I, this month I what I posted like two videos in a month um so I'm sorry about that but um, so they said, hi, Christina, I'm so, I'm so sorry for your loss. I didn't know Lindsay, but she was so important to you. And I know what it's like to lose someone close. When my mom lost her brother, she made a Christmas ornament with crystal from a dismantled chandelier past, um, pasted her brother's photo to the back and it sits on our tree every year. Our tree always has an angel. Now I made a set of, oh my God, I'm going to cry. I made a set of two angel ornaments. Well, <laughs> Oh, God. I made a set of two... Or Fuck, I can't read. I made a set of two angel ornaments. One for you and one for your family. I hope you enjoy it. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I, I moved to Eastern Ontario right before COVID, so haven't met many people yet. So if you need to grab a coffee virtually, let me know. Sincerely, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why that made me cry. Shit. Oh, I dropped everything. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I didn't mean to cry on the live stream, but this is so sweet. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. This 
the, oh God. So if you can see, it has a picture of my friend, Lindsay. And then like, sorry, I have like boogers coming into my nose. This is so gross. <laughs> it has Lindsay on this side, on both of them. And little angel wings at the top. Oh, I'm going to put these on my Christmas tree. This was really thoughtful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry if I made everyone cry. Oh, wow. I didn't expect to cry. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. God, yeah, it's been a rough month. <laughs> Uh -oh. Um, but yeah, Lindsay's one of the most beautiful people I've ever met. <laughs> and she was a great friend. I'm going to put those on my tree and then after Christmas, I'm going to hang them in my room. Just give me a second. Oh. That's so sweet. Like, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh. If my eyelashes come off, I blame you, Sarah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I need to blow my nose. Oh, I was really thoughtful. Thank you. Yeah. I, like, my dad told me to, like, make a video about my friend but every time I like I try to talk about it I just start like crying my eyes out um so yeah I do want to make a video and like talk about her and stuff but it's hard like it's still all like really fresh and like she's been one of my best friends since grade seven so yeah not having her like texting her and like realizing she'll ne never reply. It's like, like really hard. <sighs> so I would like to share funny stories with her and stuff in a video. I might make one for her birthday. That's like going to be next year, um, like in the new year, but I don't need to deal with people being like, I don't look at you using your friend's death for clout. And it's like, well, fuck you. <laughs> like, oh, you Gen Zs just like to make videos out of anything. Like, why can't you have anything personal? Oh, you, you don't think that I've gotten comments like that. That like, I spent three days just sobbing because of like hate comments I got over my own friend's death. So it's been hard for me to like talk about it publicly because people suck. Um... I had to delete a bunch of comments from, like, my Instagram post because they said really nasty things. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, Claude Maxwell said, you should talk, you should check out David Pakman and Secular Talk. I thought it would be cool if you knew about more lefty YouTubers. They have around one. I'll definitely check them out. Okay. Because I, I don't think I recognize the name David Pakman. Um, and Rebecca Sweet Music. Hi, I remember you from my other live streams and such. Hey, King Christina, I hope you're doing well. I'm so sorry for your loss. I know what it, that feels like. I live in Florida, but are you aware of the UK Parliament's role in turf politics? It's getting bad over there. No, I haven't heard about that. Um, I have a few of my patrons are from the UK. 
and actually a lot of my subscribers are from the UK as well. Um, I'll have to look into that. Turf politics. Interesting. I don't hear too much about UK politics. I've only heard a lot recently about Poland um, in Europe, but not much from the UK. Andy says, anyone who says that is going to catch these hands. Yeah. Catch these hands for free. And Jason says, she's still here because she's a part of you and who you are. Yeah, actually, you can't see because I set up a bunch of things down here that I was going to put on my wall behind me, but just like, never got around to it. Here, I'll show you guys. Because behind me, I have my like Black Lives Matter. Oh, and Haley says, we all love you. Christina, take your time to grieve. We are all here to support you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you know when you cry and you get like <laughs> after. Thank you so much, Haley. You're so sweet. But like behind me, I have my like Black Lives Matter thing, which I was going to like try to like put up here but I just never got around to putting anything up um and then I have my I have my Audrey Hepburn picture that I I thrifted and then like repainted the edges but this might make me cry again um my best friend Lindsay painted this for me um, because if you guys don't know, I played, I've played basketball since I was like seven and I played in university as well. So, um, see, it says to Christina, happy birthday. And then it says love Lindsay at the bottom. And she painted this for me for one of my birthdays. And I think it's cute. And it's been in the background of like all of my videos. You might not have been able to see it, but in my older videos, it was up at the top of my room. I don't know if you remember, it used to sit on the like uh, top of my uh, dresser and just chill on the back of my videos. And now it just sits back here. Yeah. I always thought this was so cool. She painted this for me because like ball, I used to say this all the time. I'd be like, hashtag ball is life. Like, <laughs> um, me, me and her played on the basketball team together in high school. And there was we, one of our biggest inside jokes was... Uh, we were playing in the game once and this girl missed a shot and she goes, ah, nuggets. <laughs> and I went to her and I was just crying of laughter and she's like, dude, like we're in the middle of a game. Why are you laughing? I was like, did you not hear that girl go, ah, nuggets? <laughs> so for the rest of like high school and like into like when we were in university and stuff, uh, we just literally say every time something happens, we're like, ah, nuggets. <laughs> Ah, nuggets. Uh, both of our, her, all of her yearbook messages to me are like signed off with like, ah, nuggets. And then um, even my grad quote, like, you know, when you get your final pictures um, for graduation and they go in the yearbook and you get a little grad quote beside them. My grad quote was like, ah, nuggets. It's been a crazy four years. <laughs> uh, it literally all of our friends like caught on to it. And it was just like, ah, nuggets. Every time something would happen, you would just go, ah. And nuggets. My favorite thing about her, though, is she would always be so sassy and she would kiss her teeth all the time. Because that was like a big thing at our school. Everyone was, I could never do it. Oh, I'm so bad at it. But every time something happens, she'd look at you and just go, she would kiss her teeth. She would be like, I can't do it. Oh, it's so annoying. Uh, everyone at my school used to be able to do it so well. Um, where's Nick? Um, yes, yeah, sorry. That was just me sharing a bit of my friend. Um, maybe Brock's Lightning Shade says, a loved one's memory is never um, entirely lost. Their body may have left this existence, but their legacy lives through every heart that loves, every tear that drops, every thought that pass, every thoughts that pass, they, they are never truly gone. Thank you so much. That's so true. Like, I like to think, like, she lives on in, like, all of us and, like, how we're going to, like, live the rest of our lives. Um, and, like, it sucks not like it sucks because like I promised her last summer that like <sighs> I promised her last summer that she was gonna be one of my bridesmaids so it just yeah it's like when you hit like milestones in your life you want to share them with the people that you love and it just sucks that I'm gonna share them with 
lots of people but but I won't be able to share with her in person but like she'll always be in my heart oh fuck and I love her with my whole heart so yeah and I always will because I'm, I'm gonna keep her memory alive forever I'm not gonna let anyone forget that bitch <laughs> Everyone's gonna have to live with me talking about her forever. Uh, cause she was the greatest fucking human. Um, Presto says, Hey Christina, can you make a video on AOC and all the time she's given it to Trump stands? Also, your hair looks so beautiful today. Uh, hope you're okay. I would love that. I fucking love AOC. She's such a badass bitch. And I was talking about this with some of my patrons recently. Also, thank you for the super chat. Um, and thank you for saying my hair looks beautiful. But I was talking about this with my patrons recently. And uh, I just think like people like Ilhan and AOC and like that group of women are just kind of like moving away from like the traditional politicians who just like don't give a shit about humans. And I think they're bringing like humanity back to politics. And I think that's so important. Um, yeah, sorry if I look stupid now. Y'all made me cry my fucking eyelashes off. Kaylee said, it was so nice to meet you on Zoom the other day. Uh, so glad I became a patron. My rabbits even got to meet you, lol. Oh my god, okay. That made me so happy when I got to meet your rabbits. They're so cute. My sister has a rabbit. Um, and uh, his name is Leo. And he's like a little, uh, l is what is the word for them? A dwarf, like floppy ear, or d I don't even know what they're called. A long hair, I don't know. She has a bunny and I play with it a lot. Um, I'm allergic to bunnies though as I am with cats and dogs, but I'm getting a dog anyways. Um, but it was so nice to meet you as well. That was a really fun Zoom call. Um, yes, I'm sorry, everyone, for crying. <laughs> yes, lop. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> They're lop ears. Um, that's the word. And nuggets. I'm glad. I hope everyone adopts that now. Just start saying Ah Nuggets, and that's how Lindsay will live on. Oh my god, she would love this. Fuck. She's probably laughing right now. She <laughs> it's so cute. Like, if you've ever heard my laugh, and you're like, damn, this bitch has an obnoxious laugh. Like, it was me and her, and we used to always hate our laughs, but, like, our laughs are the best things about us. Because, you know, when someone just, like, laughs obnoxiously, and you just can't help but, like, laugh because their laugh is so funny? That was her. Like, her laugh was fucking top-notch. Oh, God. It was the best. Like, you couldn't not laugh. Like, you could be in the worst mood in history, and she would laugh, and you'd be like, Ah, Nuggets, you made me laugh. <laughs> like, ah, Nuggets. <laughs> Um, yeah, her smile was just contagious. Her laugh was contagious. It's the best. Okay, we're gonna open the last package. God. Why y'all gotta make me cry? I'm gonna have to cut this one open. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Wait, it's a shirt. Oh, is there another super chat? Maybe Rock's uh, Light and Shade says, call us cutie nuggets. Oh my god, I should. My, ah, my little cutie nuggets. Oh my god. I love that. I lo I'm so excited right now. Please, you guys know all I wear is like t-shirts and sweaters. So if you ever want to send me t-shirts or sweaters that have funny sayings on them or something. <laughs> Wait, this one says... <laughs> if you tell me to smile, I'll stab you with a knife. <laughs> if that ain't me, whenever someone's like, oh, smile, you'd look a lot prettier if you just smiled. I'm like, literally, I'll stab you. Like, I'll kill you. Where's my switchblade? <laughs> I need to find my switchblade so I can pop it open. Oh my God, I love that. And this one says, oh, this is cute. It says, 
I will do my best to stop any bigot who messes with you. They're from Andy? These are from Andy? Why doesn't it say Andy on this? Andy, Andy, these are from you? Andy. Why doesn't it say Andy on the package? Because I was, I was about to message you today and be like, I didn't get the package you sent me, but I guess I did. Oh, I'm so glad I got it because I was scared it got lost in the mail. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. You didn't put your name on this? Oh, Andy, thank you. Oh my God, I love these. Well, now you got to know my real opinion of them because if they, if I found out they were from you, I'd be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> um, I really like this one though. I'm going to wear this. I will do my best to stop any bigot who messes with you, bitch. We don't accept bigotry in this house. Hell no. Thank you so much, Andy. I love them. Should I put it on over my sweater? God, sorry, I have a really runny nose now. I'm technically not allowed to blow my nose um, because of the surgery I just had, uh, but I've been kind of trying to like, just like breathe out. Like, um, maybe Rock's Lightning Shade said, I'm not used to being called the whole name. Simply use lightning. I will know thanks. <laughs> but I like maybe Rock's Lightning Shade. <laughs> Okay, Lightning, I love you. Thank you for super chatting so much. You are you are literally my hero. Thank you. You're the best. <laughs> Just use Lightning. I will know. Um, did you get... Andy said, did you get the gift message with it? This? Is this it? I think... No? Oh. <laughs> I, I, this was in it. I don't know what this is. Is there no gift message? Wait. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you guys could literally just message me, but I like how I'm trying to uh, read the chat. Um... It's more fun to type in the chat. Um, I don't know. Maybe I dropped it. Did I open it? Because um, I got this thing in here, but I'm guessing this is just the, like, thing, like, for the company. Um, at first, I thought you got me a book because I saw all these books, and I was like, oh, interesting. Ooh, I actually think these books look interesting. I really like, I really want to start reading more books now that I'm done university. So if anyone ever wants to send, send me like uh, books. Right now I'm reading one called Pretty Little Things. Um, it's a really good book. Uh, Jamie says, sending lots of love, love from Ireland. I hope you're doing okay. I love you and your content so much. Watching your videos have helped me with so much. Oh, Ireland. Where's Anna? She should come say hi. Um, love Ireland. Would love to visit there one day. Although I am Scottish, not Irish. Um, I'm a quarter Scottish. Um, I would love to visit Ireland sometime. Your accents are the absolute cutest, cutest, cutest things. Um, I love you too. And thank you for supporting me and super chatting. Thank you. Love you. Um, Lightning says, answering Jason here, I'm good. And yes, it was fun to super chat because I get to pay more for who I enjoy watching. 
I love you, Lightning. I love you so much. You rock. Don't ever change. You maybe rocks? <laughs> Lightning shades? <laughs> you rock. I love you. Um... um. But Andy, I hope there wasn't like a special message that I like lost or something. Or does it like say somewhere on here? Um, Halsey is very much so queen says love ya just want wanted to give to be honest oh you guys are so sweet it makes me emotional when people want to like this is what I say to my patrons all the time I get so upset when people like want to support me but I'm like I love you for supporting me so thank you uh, Charles Williams says when will we be able to see that thick barnacle baddie again. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to send that to her. I'm looking forward to your podcast. I'm going to have Justine on the podcast. So if you guys have been watching my channel for some time, you would know that one of my best friends, uh, Justine, uh, has been on my channel a bunch, like before I started doing commentary, like when I used to do vlogs and stuff, Justine was in most of my videos or a lot of them. Um, and we went viral on Reddit for being Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. And Justine got called Barnacle Baddie um, because she looked thick in her Barnacle Boy costume. Um, but I would love to have Justine on the podcast because Justine's really, really smart. Um, she gets kind of shy in front of the camera, but uh, I'm hoping that she'll do well on the podcast. Because she was getting more comfortable in front of the camera the more I put it in front of her. Um, but hopefully she will come on the podcast and I'm hoping to start soon. Um, thank you guys for all being patient with the podcast. Cause I meant to start it back in like October and then, you know, shit went real sour in my life. So, um, but it will be coming soon. Stay tuned. Andy said, no, don't worry. It wasn't really special. It was the way to idea. It was for me. Interesting. Cause other, if it wasn't for this life, she might have no idea it was from you. Um, but thank you so much, Andy. Anna Whalen said, hi, Jamie. Yes, I'm from Ireland and I'm one of Christina's patrons. Uh, love that. And Christina, I want to do something special for you and Lindsay. Oh, stop. I'm going to cry again. Uh, that's very sweet. And it's it's been so nice, like, seeing everyone be so excited to, like, know Lindsay and, like, have me, like, share her with everyone because she was a really big part of, like, why I am the way I am and, like, who I am because I, like, literally grew up with her. Grade 7 to being I guess grade seven's like what 12 years old I was 12 years old at least because I was younger than everyone because I have a late birthday but I was 12 years old when I started grade seven and we stayed friends from grade seven which was 12 we stayed friends from age 12 to age 23 so that's a long fucking time you know I grew up with her she made me the person I am today um yeah she's just a special special person also I wonder if I have my phone with me yes because I, I have an album where I have, like, all of our photos together. And I found this, like, screenshot. I don't know if you can see. It's, like, a screenshot from when I was in high school. And she texted me. And she she wanted to tell me all the reasons why she loved me. And um, uh, she said, Well, first off, you know where you stand and you stand your ground. Even if the majority of opinions is one thing, you're not afraid to say you believe in the opposite. You're not afraid to stand up for what you believe in. You don't give a fuck what people think and you do things for you. You're outgoing and kind. You're literally the funniest person I know, hands down, and you have the most genuine heart. You're so weird, but I love it because I can be weird around you too. You just have this presence and I think it makes people happy. I literally can't see anyone hating you unless it's because they're jelly of your basketball skills. You're super laid back. And I don't know. I just relate to you a lot. That's why I love you. And so it's like, she was the number one supporter for me, like being as opinionated as I am, you know, most people like 
hate that I'm so opinionated who are in my life because I start arguments with everyone. Like I'll go to a party and like start talking about politics and everyone's like, Christine, we're just trying to get drunk. And I'm like, why do you hate poor people though? I'm like, I don't understand why you voted conservative when you know that that is disproportionately affecting like, <laughs> and everyone's like, Christina, we're just trying to have fun. I'm like, and like, I could be in a room with people who all think one thing and I think a completely different one. And I'm like, I'm still going to argue with bitch. Like, I'm not going to stand down <laughs> just because it makes you more comfortable. Um, so yeah, I think that was really sweet of her to say back in like high school too, when I probably I was not, I was not as opinionated as I am now in high school. Lightning said, you're king of jokes. I'm queen of puns. Try me. Unlucky. <laughs> uh, nugget shy about my puns. Is that a pun? I'm not sure. I'm so bad at puns. I'm pretty sure Jason's really good at puns though. I'm queer of puns or queen. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm. I'm. I'm a little bit dumb, to be honest. <laughs> um, but love you, lightning. Jason, you're pretty good. Why are you saying what? I thought you're. Aren't you're good at puns? You make them all the time. I'm okay. I'm okay. He says I'm okay at puns. Hush, Jason. I'll hurt you. I hope I get to meet all of you one day. Sorry, someone said just they hope they to meet me one day. It'd be cool. I know that YouTubers used to go on like tours back in the day. I don't know if that's still a thing. Um, uh, but that would be cool. I feel like YouTubers used to do a lot of things back in the day uh, that they do not do anymore. Oh, someone just, okay. Cole McKittrick said, what's your number one song for Spotify wrapped? We need some music suggestions. Or, would you guys be really mad at me if I said I don't listen to Spotify? <laughs> would you be, would you judge me if I said I'm an Apple music girl? I wonder if they have like an Apple music wrapped. Um, Oh my god, Lightning said, I'm NB, so yes, queer at puns. Uh, love that. Um, I'll nugget, not get shy about them. Try me. I don't know if you guys heard that. My, my dad just like smashed his foot into the ground and screamed a swear word because his football team probably is losing. Um, how you roll in the pun department. I'm... I'm not smart. I'm not as smart as you, Lightning. I puns puns go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> uh. See, the problem with Spotify is that I need, like, you usually need like Wi-Fi or like data to connect to it, don't you? I don't know. So, if Apple Music is easy for me because it's literally just like on my phone and I can like connect it to everything. And also I had so much music from LimeWire and FrostWire that I illegally downloaded that was already in my like Apple, like my iTunes. That makes sense. So I didn't want to lose that all that music I already had. I would have to go through all of Spotify and like find those songs again. So it was just easier for me to like stick with Apple Music because I already had so many songs I illegally downloaded since I was 12. Um, so... I have all these songs, but then I now I just keep going to Apple Music and adding new songs from there because Frostwire decided it was going to close. <laughs> and iTunes closed too. So, but yeah. It was just easier for me to do that, do it that way. <laughs> um, I have never finished my sandwich, so I might finish my sandwich right now. <laughs> McKenna Topping. Hi, McKenna. Says, hey, Christina. Just wanted to send my love. Thank you for all that you do. You truly are a king, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you so much, McKenna. I love you a lot. Hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry, someone someone chatted, but I'm scared one of my moms is going to hide it before I can read it. Why are Marxists trying to indoctrinate our kids with anti-white? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Anti-white, anti-straight propaganda. School is gay now. Well, I would hope school is gay now. <laughs> I like how I like how when people you say like black lives matter, everyone's like, "Well, what about white lives?" And it's like, "When have white lives ever not mattered?" You know what I mean? It's like in history. And he said, I thought I hit it. You did. I, I clicked view it because I'm still allowed to see it. But ah. It's like when people are like, well, what about straight pride? I'm like, what do you think like life has been? In history, when have straights like not been prideful of their straightness? Like, shut the fuck up. I hate people. The Marxists. The Marxists. I don't know. Maybe because you guys are racist. Like, that's why everyone's against you. Fuck. Um, Lightning says, what do you call a food truck race? Hunger Games. <laughs> that's a good one. I also love the Hunger Games and kind of want to reread the books. I never actually finished the movies, though. Same with Divergent. I never watched the Divergent movies. And I'm obsessed. And I'm obsessed with the Divergent series. You guys are just watching me eat mukbang with Christina. First, <laughs> first you guys got to watch me cry. Now you get to watch me eat. Like, Candace Owens out here tweeting about how heterophobic all of us are. Like, have you checked the dictionary? Heterophobia isn't a fucking word, dude. Like, no one actually cares if you're straight. We might joke about it, but no one gives a shit. You fucking breeders. Fucking weirdos. The breeders want to be oppressed so badly. And Candace Owens, who is literally, like, a black woman, probably, like, one of the most disfranchised categories in the United States, is literally sitting here and pretending that her straightness is what makes her oppressed? Dude, like, fight the battles that you can actually, like, prove. Like, women are oppressed, and black women especially. Like, you should fight for a cause that's actually important, not heterophobia, you idiot. So annoying, dude. She could actually be such a great activist. And she uses her platform for heterophobia. And calling Harry Styles, like, a gay man. Like. Garbage. It's all garbage. Because I was thinking about this today. Obviously, I really greatly dislike Tommy Lar Laren. Tommy Laren. I could never say her last name. But I do really, really respect that although she literally got fired from her job for this, she admitted that she is pro-choice. And she wasn't going to let, like, the side that she prescribes to, which is obviously very hardcore right-wing, because um, she's like, 
literally an announcer on Fox, like a segment of Fox News. Um, she sucks. She's an awful person and, and spews awful shit. But the fact that she was like, you know what, I, I'm going to go against the, the stream and literally say that I'm pro-choice because that's what I believe in was really important to me. And although I don't like her, I respect that she did that. She actually like, literally they took her off the show for a while when she admitted that she was pro-choice. Also, Claudia Kratz, super chatted. Thank you so much, Claudia. And it's like, she can understand that like abortion is literally just like the right to your own body. So... I can't even eat this because it's all going to fall out. I filmed a video on Candace Owens, but then I lost all the footage. So I was like, well, that's not going up. Yes. Some of my patrons and I were talking about, like, there's heterosexual people, which we have no problem with. But then there's the straights, you know? It's like we don't have a problem with, like, Caucasian people. It's the whites, you know what I mean? It's the people who are, like... You know, like straight people, like people who are just a little bit too, you know. Like, we don't mind you guys being heterosexual. We just don't be it so much that you have to discriminate against gay people, you weirdos. We, we like Caucasian people. We just don't like the whites. The ones who want to go in the street and scream white power or some shit. Fuck that. Like, I'm not ashamed to be white, but I'm definitely not proud of it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm so embarrassed for the way I was born. But I'm definitely not proud of the way. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Medved said as a fellow Lindsay I will keep saying all nuggets I love that I love that so much thank you Lindsay I'm almost done. Give me a minute. Okay, I think I'm done. Mm -hmm.
Lightning says, I'm proud to be born white, just not proud to have been raised racist. True. Which is a behavior I am gladly unlearning every day. I'm so glad you're unlearning that and taking that journey. That's really important. I think, like, accepting that you've, like, been taught things a certain way and it's been wrong and accepting that and embarking on that journey of, like, educating yourself and trying to be actively anti-racist is such an important thing. I think sometimes people get shamed for, like, their past or whatever but as long as you're like trying to work towards a better future that's what's important you know Someone said, do you think that capitalism is a problem? For the most part, yes. Because basically, a capitalistic society exploits its workers. Um, like, they, they don't get, like, your workers don't get paid enough for the amount of work they do. So they're constantly, like, you just basically work until you die. You never actually have freedom within a capitalistic society. In my opinion, I think it's important to integrate certain levels. I mean, if we wanted an ideal society, we'd probably get rid of capitalism as a whole. But in practicality, you would probably want to incorporate socialist ideologies and capitalist ideologies into one um, government or... Mm -hmm. uh, Claudia, thank you for super chatting again. Someone asked how tall I am. I'm five five ten, like five nine, five ten, depending on the shoes I wear. I get mistaken for six feet all the time because the way my body is like proportioned, I look way taller than I am. So I get asked a lot if I'm six feet, especially by guys who are by guys who are five ten. <laughs> five ten guys are always like no, no, you're six feet. Because I'm 5'10". You're not 5'10". I'm 5'10". I'm like, no, dude. You're definitely like 5'7". <laughs> and you're 5'7 you're pretending to be 5'10". And then pretending that I'm six feet? No. Yeah, guys go on about like... Oh, girls always want tall guys and then they body shame us for being short. I had a guy come up to me and say to my face uh, that I was really pretty, but I was too tall. Like, you guys are the one who created these standards. We're just abiding by them. <laughs> like, Because one of my guy friends and me got into an argument. This is actually his sweater. <laughs> we got into a big argument. Because. He was like, why is it okay for women to body shame men for being short, but men are allowed to body shame women for being fat? I was like, because it's just not the same. Um, it's not as... Like, fat shaming is way more systemic 
than height shaming. Like, you don't have to pay more to fly on a plane because you're actually, oh, if you're too tall, but not if you're too short. Um, I don't think you have to pay more if you're too tall, but you just won't fit in a plane. You know, if you're, oops, if you're overweight or like a big person, you got, like, clothes don't fit you, you know, you have to get like special sizes, you have to get things tailored, um, you, like, you have to pay more, uh, your life uh, insurance goes up way higher, you know, it's a, it, like, it's a systemic thing that uh, big people get, you know, discriminated. And so I think it's unfair to compare uh, body shaming women that's like, so insanely like widespread and has been for centuries and it's it was created by a patriarchal society where men um men created women be small and feminine man be big and strong and masculine and y like y'all created this patriarchal society so when a woman says okay the only way for me to feel like a woman is to feel small and to feel tiny compared to man um, women will most likely only feel secure in themselves if they find a man who is larger than them in, like, size. Um, so it's just not comparable to say that fat shaming a girl is the same as, like... I, although I think both are, like, a little bit shitty, and I definitely used to contribute to being like, oh, you're short, like, ew. But it's just wrong in all sense to, like, body shame people, but... It's just not comparable. Also, Rachel uh, Lobodin, Lobodin says, Good day, Christina. Hi, Rachel. I hope you're having a good day as well. Thank you. I um, hope that made sense, though, because my guy friends did not like that argument. They were like, no, it's the same. I'm like, it's not. It's not. Bye, Lindsay. Love you. Jamie says, I got to go to bed, but I want to send one more message before I do. Have a great day slash evening, whichever it is there. It's evening, but thank you so much, Jamie. Hope you have a good day or evening, whichever one it is for you. Um, oh, I guess you said you're going to bed, so it's evening. Have a good night. Sleep well. Love you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I hope that made sense. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, Laura M said, my girl Michelle recommended your channel. So glad she did. Is that like my Michelle? <laughs> Yes, me and M Michelle used to um, see each other. Um, but yeah, she uh, she put my channel on her story recently and congratulating me on 200,000K and I think 200,000K, 200,000 subscribers. And um, she told me that one of her friends uh, subscribed to me and I was like, yes, thank you, Michelle, you're the best. <laughs> and they were roommates. Someone said, is race a social construct or biological? It's a social construct. Basically, like, people... Uh, one second. So Super Chat from Haley said, gotta go take French class. I have a test today. Wish me luck. Love you. See you. Good luck in your French test. I'm so bad at French, but... I hope you do well. <laughs> and I've had French since I was in kindergarten. Um, I was going to say, race, ethnicity, and nationality, people always get confused. Race is categorizing or, like, grouping people by biological features that uh, society has deemed important. So, like, when we... Like, the different races that are social constructs are uh, Asian... 
black, white, Hispanic, and native, I'm pretty sure. And you, like, you wouldn't just all categorize them by skin color, right? There's other biological features that go along with it because there are some um, Asian people like Filipino and um, Indian, you know, who are the same, like, skin tone as people who are from Africa. So you would not consider them both to be black, right? Um, It's because they have certain facial features or, um, you know, designated, like, biological features that would put them in one category or another. Um, and then ethnicity is the place, uh, it's like grouping people by culture. Um, so w- sorry, I lost my train of thought there. And then nationality is grouping some people like from where they're born, where they live or are born. If that makes sense. Um, but yes, um yeah but definitely a social construct there's nothing that would differentiate me from a hispanic person or me from a black person other than outside characteristics you know what i mean which anyone can have like um It's just more common to one race or the other. Um, But yeah, we're all the same on the inside. We all have the same bones, same blood that courses through our veins. There's nothing to actually differentiate us uh, if you ripped our skin off, you know? Um, So it's definitely a social construct, as is gender, you know? We've literally learned that there are way more than just two sets of chromosomes. There are many different, I think there's six altogether, six different combinations of sex chromosomes. Um, some are more rare than others, but doesn't mean they don't exist. Um, some people can have both male and female genitalia. So it's like, it doesn't make sense for there to be just male and female. We've like outgrown that, that like, but people still want to cling to that because it's all we've ever known. But I think as time goes on, we'll be more open to the idea that there's more than just male and female. Um, and gender is very different than sex. Um, I think gender expression is important, more important to some people than others. And sex is more important to some people than others. Um, Yeah. Rebecca Sweet Music says, I assume you heard about Elliot Page's coming out as trans and non-binary. I'm so proud of him. Conservatives are seething. Yes, I've been planning on doing a video about it. I just... Um, this week I've just been really tired. I haven't been sleeping a lot, but I really wanted to do a video on how Elliot Page came out and like the conservatives are just crying about it. Oh my God. Did you see Ben Shapiro's video on it? It was like embarrassing. He was like, well, um, theoretically, uh, well, when you look at Elliot Page, like, I don't understand why we're using Elliot Page because, uh, he only named himself that and he would, he purposely misgendered him. Like, like you see, he had to pause and like, think about it for a second and go, Okay, I'm going to call him a she. Like, it was so annoying. Ugh. He's like, well, biologically, um, Elliot Page will always be a woman. And theoretically, uh, when we look at that, I'm like, oh my god, shut your fucking mouth. Like, I just don't understand, like, what, what they get off on. On, like, misgendering people and stuff. Like, why, does this change anything in your life? Does it? No. So, like, why do you care? So, And then he's like, and people will just say that I'm obsessed. Um, because I'm talking about it. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Precisely, you are obsessed. Um, the fact that you care about what someone else identifies as so much that you would go as far as to rudely um, call them something else than they want to be called, uh, it means you care way too much, dude. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And he's like, well, uh, now uh, uh, Elliot Page plays a, uh, a gay woman on... Uh, umbrella academy so like what's theoretically like what it's going to happen now on the show and it, like blah, blah, blah. It, well, isn't this cultural appropriation that um a man now is playing a gay woman um isn't it i was like oh my god <laughs> he really just called it cultural appropriation <laughs> like like you can't compare this to like 
people who are autistic wanting to um, be more represented in autistic roles because they are very few and far between. Like, will autistic people actually get roles? Like in the whole like Maddie Ziegler and Sia thing. Um, like uh, Maddie Ziegler pay played an autistic character um, when they should have gotten an actual autistic person to play that character um, because autistic people don't even have nearly as much representation as they should have in media. Uh, ow, ooh, I just hit my elbow. I'm pretty sure that that women have a good amount of repre representation nowadays in, in media and stuff um, that I don't think a uh, former gay woman now identifying as a trans man is bothering anyone playing a, a gay woman on a show. And also, I assume that since they made the character to fit uh, Elliot Page's uh, former identity, that they would, at the very least, um, you know, try to accommodate him now. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? <clears throat> oh. Brian Evans says, I live in a house full of Ben supporters. It's okay. I found out that two of my friends um, are actually really big fans of Ben Shapiro. It was traumatizing. It was actually traumatizing. I actually like had to take a minute and I, I genuinely just texted back and I was like, I would be embarrassed if I were you. Like, I just didn't even know what to say. I was like, that's embarrassing. Um... One of them told me that they were a Ben Shapiro supporter and the other one I didn't ask, but he follows Ben Shapiro on Instagram. So I'm, a, I'm pretty sure he's a Ben supporter. Um, someone asked what my pronouns were. Tick and Tom Bomb said, what are your pronouns? Um, basically, I tell people I go by whatever, pro like I don't, pronouns don't really bother me. Um, if you want to call me she, that's cool. He, that's cool. They, that's cool. I don't get offended. Any pronouns work for me. Um, in uh, in my... Um... Oh, Jason said, I got it. I did the pronouns. I usually just put in my bios and stuff, she or they. Which makes it easiest for me. Um... Yeah, Dan Hetfield said, to be fair, I follow Donald Trump for the last... Like, I, I understand that because I have... Like, I know my friend Jimmy Snow follows Donald Trump and Caitlin Bennett just so he can keep up to date with, like, what they're saying so, like, he can make videos on it, which is totally understandable. Um, but as, like, my friend who doesn't do commentary and doesn't need to keep up with Ben Shapiro because Ben Shapiro isn't, like this huge figure, you know what I mean? Like Donald Trump or something like that. It's just weird for him to be following him. Maybe he does want to just like laugh at his content, but he's also a conservative. So I'm assuming it's to not laugh at his content, but to like revel in it. Um, Pico, Pico Yama, super chatted. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah. Also, both of those guys that I'm friends with are big fans of Joe Rogan and Elon Musk. So that tells you something. <laughs> I don't know what it is with white guys and being like obsessed with Joe Rogan and Elon Musk. Like, I don't see anything special about them. They just appeal to like the, the, the basic white man. Um, Pico, Pico Yama says opinion on neo pronouns. What are neo pronouns? Am I, I don't know all these words. What is a neo pronoun? Does anyone want to explain that to me? And Joe Arnold said, hi, Christina, love you and your videos. Have you heard that Biden promised to sign the equality acts into law? It's so important that Democrats win the Senate. Yes. You're totally right. And right now it's looking okay for the democrats but it's really important that we win those seats because legislatively at like on um on a smaller scale level it's so important to win the senate like it's almost it is more important to win the senate than it is to like win the presidency because they kind of like choose most like policies that go into act in states uh and it's so important um sorry someone says neo pronouns 
Search it up. <laughs> Search it up, Christina. Um, someone said you don't like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is a raging conservative, just by the way. I mean, not a reason I hate him, but like, I, I just, I don't know. He's good at his job. I just don't think I would like him as a person. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Um, someone said, <laughs> this is Ben. I have never seen a wet ass P word. So logically, hypothetically, this is a non-existent notion that women can be aroused and or get wet by me, Shapiro. <laughs> I'm screaming. Um, okay. Okay, no one, I don't think anyone explained to me what that means. I'm going to look it up. Neo pronouns. Neo pronouns. Neo pronouns are a set of singular third person pronouns that are not officially recognized in the language they are used in, typically created with the intent of being gender neutral pronoun set. Does someone want to give me an example? Like, oh, like they, them? Wait, some people prefer using neo pronouns as an alternative gender neutral pronoun set. This can be because they want to avoid singular they, oh, being confused with plural they, because neo pronouns express something about them or their gender. Oh, this is actually cool. I've never heard of this before. Interesting. Oh, is it like when people use like Z and Zer? I've heard of that before. But I've only ever seen like the Z and Zer or whatever. It's very interesting. I've never had anyone ask me to call them like a neo pronoun. Um, but I would definitely respect it if they did. It would be hard to like um adapt to at first definitely because i it's um I, obviously your brain wants to automatically go to say what you're used to saying um but i would definitely try my best like always to respect people's preferred pronouns and if that's a neo pronoun then and that's important to them i would respect that and try my best uh to not mistake them for something else um Rebecca says, the good thing here in the States is that the House of Representatives is passing the bill that will de decriminalize marijuana. The issue is that it has to get approved by the Senate. Yes. And also, I think along with the importance of like decriminalizing marijuana, which we've done here in Canada, is expunging uh, people for like the long sentences that they've had for marijuana possession or whatever. Because there's a lot of people who are still in jail for decades because of uh, marijuana use or possession. And it sucks because if it becomes decriminalized or legal or whatever, um, it's not fair that these people like have to like rot in jail. And generally, they put people in jail for way too long on drug charges. Like, don't you think that they, like, people who are, like, they would, they would benefit more from, like, a rehab program or, like, even people who are, like, selling drugs to, like, a rehabilitation? I don't know. Sorry, I had to crack my back.
Yeah, sorry, I zoned out for a second. <laughs> Jason, Christine, are you here? Um, yo, 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 is Kim in the chat? What's Kim's name in the chat? Loki, I don't know. <laughs> oh, someone said, We want a Blair White video. Why do people in the US debate things that are successfully implemented all over the world already, like universal health care? Because of propaganda and misinformation and fear mongering. Um, when you have a whole political party who tells you that so uh, that um, it's not even universal health care, but uh, because I guess technically the United States has universal health care, but it's not socialized health care. Um, when you have like free healthcare for all or like mostly covered healthcare, um, you have a whole party that's saying, bro, that's socialism. And you know what socialism leads to? Venezuela. You know, when you have a whole party that's like, we're going to have to eat rats and we're going to have to suffer in a communist country if we uh, get proper socialized healthcare in our country we're gonna have to force ourselves to become communists like venezuela uh you have a whole party like spreading that information and creating all these like false narratives and spreading them everywhere you're gonna have a lot of people who are really scared and i think like literally half the country is just terrified of ending up like venezuela and it's just not true and it's not even remotely charitable to like they're not even remotely charitable to like listening to the other side. But, uh, oh, and also thank you, Mira, for your super chat. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to say that. Um, but I think it's so important that we we do look at the countries who have been successful because you look at countries like the Scandinavian countries because people will always be like, well, when has socialism ever been successful? Where have you ever seen socialism ever be successful? And then people go like, well, in Canada, in the Scandinavian countries. And they go, oh, well, that's not fully socialist. They have capitalist ide ideologies there as well. And you're like, so why can't we implement that here? And they're like, because that's socialism. And you're like, I thought you just said it wasn't socialism. Like, It's like, okay, Um we don't want to become socialist like the Scandinavian countries. And, and you're like, but, th but they're doing very well. And you're like, yeah, but they're only doing well because they're not fully socialist. And you're like, well, well, why can't we implement some of those? And they're like, because that's socialist. And you're like, but it's, you just said it wasn't fully socialist. It makes no sense. Um, oh my God. Yeah. It's like they're right there and they understand that the Scandinavian countries in Canada, like implement socialized um like partial socialized government but they do have still capitalist uh like they still live in a capitalist society and it works very well and it's very good for its people but they just won't implement it in america because they fear mongered this idea of socialism that socialism leads ultimately to communism and communism leads to venezuela and it's it's all these buzzwords you hear whenever you hear like those dumb conservatives and they're like Venezuela rats uh, Marxism uh, they're just te they're feeding our kids Marxist ideologies w then we're they're gonna be feeding us rats in our communist society and you're like wait if if one plus one equals two and two plus two equals four what the fuck is this <laughs> like, makes no sense. Um. But hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> That's why America is so scared to try out anything that has been gone well in any other country.
I actually want to. Okay, so someone mentioned something about Canadian healthcare. Um, oh shit. Me and my uh, <laughs> Andy super tat and said, "Tell Anna that being bi is being LGBTQ plus, and she's valid." Dude, what? You realize that like LGBTQ, like the B there's for bi. If one plus one is two and two plus two is four, what the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, yes, being being bi does make you a part of the LGBTQ community and you are very valid. And whether you're questioning or whether um, you're experimenting, just don't put too much pressure on yourself because just enjoy yourself in the community. You know, we accept you. We love you. We don't need to gatekeep here. Um but yeah. if one plus one equals two and two plus two equals four and socialism equals rat socialism equals rats literally makes no sense you know and funny people will be like well huh communism communism has never worked like look at all the countries that have been communist and I'm like, what countries? Because communism has never been successfully run. Like, like, I mean, communism has never actually been run. There has never been an actual communist country. There may have been countries that called themselves communist, but they didn't actually practice communism. So. You're like, communism has never worked. I'm like, where have you seen communism? Where? Nowhere. That's right. Like, communist China is not actually communist. If I call myself a turkey, does that make me a turkey? No. <laughs> turkey Christina. Gobble, gobble. And then you have those transphobes who are like, well, I identify as an attack helicopter. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Um, what was I about to say, though? I was saying something, and then I lost my train of thought. Uh, it's funny because I get asked about Hassan Piker. Um, in every one of my live streams and every one of my live streams I say do you know how many times I've tried to DM that kid <laughs> I'm such a simp for Hassan um, you guys should convince uh, Hassan that he should he should talk to me <laughs> What was I going to say, though? I literally had something to say. Let me scroll back. Do, 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 do. Oh, we were talking about Canadian healthcare. So I get in a lot of arguments with my conservative friend about Canadian healthcare. Because if you talk to most conservatives, uh, they don't like our healthcare system. For obvious reasons. They want a private... Uh, like private insurance instead of public health care. Um, I personally think Canadian health care is wonderful. I think it has flaws as any system does. Um, I think there are problems with our system that could be made better. I think there are more things we could cover because like our health care doesn't cover dental care. Uh, you have to have insurance for that. Um, it doesn't cover like mental health or anything like that. It literally just covers like uh, like family healthcare practitioners and like hospital visits and stuff and like care through those. Um, and sometimes like, especially if you need to see a specialist, there'll be a bit of a wait, but if something is urgent and dire, uh, you'll get in right away. Usually, you know what I mean? Um, but people will compare that to like, can, sorry, America. And it's like, well, you don't realize that people will die. Literally they'll, they'll, wait until they're almost dead before they go see a doctor or go to the hospital. So the wait times in America are actually significantly higher. Uh, they're just not able to track them or 
statistically uh, look at how many people have to wait or how long they wait for. You're not, you're not able to graph that or calculate it because, you know, I saw symptoms in 1984 and I didn't show up to the doctor's office until 2010 because I couldn't afford to, you know, whereas in Canada, you can go right away and you can, you know, ask the doctor, hey, this doesn't look well and they'll, they'll get you in right away. Now, if you have to have a, a, a major surgery or something that um, you need to see a specialist for, specialists can have a, like a long wait because we're, they're looking at, you know, most people and we have a shortage of doctors um, because a lot of our doctors end up going to America because they get paid better there. Um, not to say the doctors here don't get paid well, they get paid very well, but you can make, you know, millions uh, instead of hundreds of thousands, you know? So, I mean, it's shitty. It's like greed ridden. Um, but for me, uh, what I've had, I've had to stay in the hospital three times now uh, in my life. Um, my mom had cancer. Uh, a lot of people in my family have had cancer, like, and all of it's covered. So I couldn't imagine, like, we'd be broke. Like, we would not have done well, like, with all the treatments, um, like, all of us had to have. I had a, I had to have an emergency appendectomy when I was 12 and we didn't have to pay for that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like little things like that. Like no one asked to have appendicitis. It's not like I did something to my body for like 12 years and got appendicitis. It was like just something that happens. Um, so I think it's unfair that you have to be punished for literally just having a body, you know? Yeah. And like, I can't even imagine the cost of like having cancer and doing chemotherapy and radiation and getting a, like, and getting surgeries to like remove things. Um, oh my God, that would have cost so much in the States. You would have had to drop like a couple hundred grand probably. And so some people will just opt out. I can't afford that. So I'm just going to let the cancer get worse until it's so bad that they like have to treat me, you know? Um, so I'm so happy. Um, Someone said, don't you pay with taxes, though? Yeah. So on average, a uh, Canadian will pay for health care $6,000 in, um, like, taxes for health care. And so that compared to, like, what an American would pay just to, like, get checkups. Like, uh, Americans pay, I think, like, 10000 or something a year um, just for, like, doctor's visits and everything. So, Yeah. And our, actually, our taxes aren't even that bad. Like, we don't have super high taxes. Um, we only tax pretty high for people who make over $400,000. Oh, yeah, it's crazy that in the United States, you have to pay so much money for an ambulance ride. Like... Like that one time I had to take, be taken in an ambulance um, uh, two years ago. I couldn't imagine like thinking that, isn't it like a thousand dollars or like something crazy in the States for an ambulance ride? Um, so I could not imagine, like I would feel so bad if my parents uh, had to pay for that. I'm sorry, what? No. 10K for an ambulance ride? 4,000? I think 1,000. It's 1,500. Oh my. That's messed up. Oh my God. Imagine. Like, you already feel bad enough. Like, I must have felt so bad when the ambulance took me. Like, if my parents had to pay, like, fucking four grand or some shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Someone said, insane. I was in a wreck and I was begging them not to take me. Yeah, you're like, please let me drive myself. <laughs> I'll drive myself in my broken car if I just don't have to pay for this ambulance. Dude, that's fucked up. So anyone who says that, 
Yeah. My friend was trying to argue that the Canadian system isn't like that much better than the American system. And I'm like, dude, you can say we're not perfect. You can say we have our flaws, but you cannot say that we're not way better than the American system. Um, I do understand why people would want like both a public and a private option um, because it would it would be beneficial for people who like work in hospitals and stuff. Um, and it would help like wait times, but I think we're doing fairly well. I was thinking about making a video on healthcare because I find it really annoying when people say that, well, if, have you ever talked to a Canadian? They hate your healthcare system. I'm like, I live in Canada. What do you, what do you say? I've never heard anyone who's not conservative complain about our healthcare system. Yeah. It's like no one here literally waits until they're almost dead uh, to get help. So that on its own. Also, why is everyone saying notice Jason? Jason, what's up? I notice you a lot. You don't notice me or my Instagram stories, though. What's up, Jason? Listen to Jason. What is Jason saying? What did I miss? Check Twitter. Okay. Okay. Um, Lightning says, S. Meyer has asked if gender reassignment surgeries are free in uh, our country. In Canada. One second. I'll have to actually look that up because I don't think I know that. Oh, Jason said I missed a super chat. Oh, that was probably it. Sorry, S. Myers. Um, let's see. Are gender reassignment surgeries covered in Canada? I think they're partially covered, but I'm not 100%. Yes. Okay. So it's partially covered under a whole hip. Oopsies. Um, at, so at least in Ontario, which is where I'm from, it's covered. I think it's partially covered in Alberta's healthcare. Yeah. So you can apply for it. Uh, gender confirming surgery. Um Affirming gender identity, how to qualify, approval for genital surgery, approval for chest surgery, apply for surgery. Yeah, I think it's partially covered, if not all of it. Which is pretty cool. I know that probably makes a lot of people upset being like, my tax dollars, I'm paying for your your surgeries. It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I might have to go soon because I did promise myself I would film a video. But
Um, Antifa is an ideology, and yes, I am against fascism, so I would be considered Antifa. Do I have a can? <laughs> just like a can. <laughs> I just need a hat now. Black hat. Um... <laughs> um, Rebecca says the other problem is that our government in the U.S. doesn't do much to financially support people who still have to work during a pandemic. They only got a twelve hundred dollars stimulus check. That was barely enough. I was actually talking about this the other day, um, because what was really something I appreciated was. The party that I like here in Canada, which is NDP. So our country is run by the liberals. Um, so if you look at the political spectrum, you have like the conservative party, you have the liberal party, and then you have like NDP, which is like farther left. So I like NDP. They're like progressives. And um, <laughs> um, sorry, <laughs> Jason. Yes, I am dissociating, Jason. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm trying to stay here, though, mentally. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. NDP gave up the recent election um, because in order to, like, allow us to keep getting checks, um, we don't call it stimulus checks. We call it CERB. Um, but it's, like, same thing. So when I found out that, like, people literally got one check... One check for twelve hundred thousand, like tw sorry for twelve hundred dollars. That's absolutely crazy. Twelve hundred dollars. That that was it. One check, and it even came late because Trump wanted to sign his name on it. That's fucked. Like we were getting two thousand dollars a month. At at like least, I think it was like fifteen hundred to two thousand, um, and then people who had like applied for more got more um and then ndp gave up the recent election um in order to get the liberals to agree to give more serb checks um because you know the pandemic is extending now into 2021 so that was really awesome i was a little upset because i was like i guess we weren't going to win the, the upcoming election but you know whatever it takes to you know get people the funding that they need like people can't really work right now and if they can it's like they're putting themselves at risk they should be getting paid a good amount of money um yeah so that was really upsetting that when i found out that i thought you guys were at least getting 1200 a month but if like a lot of people just received one check and like never heard anything again um I'm like, if you just like literally cut some military funding, like a quarter of your military funding, half of your military funding, um, which you don't need right now, like what do you need your military funding for? If you cut your military funding in half, you would still have the most expensive military in all the entire world. So just like cut some of it out. You don't even need most of it, to be honest. A lot of it's just wasted money. Um, use that to help your citizens survive a global pandemic that you exasperated by not handling it properly. Like, oh God. Like imagine having people in power who just like do not give a shit about you at all. Like Justin Trudeau kind of sucks, but at least he like kind of cares. <laughs> like, 
And at least we have people um, that are holding Justin Trudeau accountable, like in other parties, you know what I mean? Don't worry, babe. You could have Boris Johnson. <laughs> yeah, facts. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't think Justin Trudeau was like the worst leader in the world. You know what I mean? Uh, I definitely think he could be better. Um, I think he makes a lot of empty promises and he's made a lot of promises to our native people that he hasn't followed through on, which is like so shitty. And he's, um, what else? He kind of just like says things that are like complete lies as well. Like his, uh, like he funding, um, what was it? Funding Yemen, like sending like $60 million to Yemen, but then also funding um, the areas around Yemen that were destabilizing Yemen, like funding weaponry, like basically funding mass genocide. So it's like he was acting like he was this great person and then at the same time, like screwing Yemen over. And now it's just like beyond helping. Um, don't appreciate that from him. Oh, Gabby P said, I had to pay so much to get my appendix removed when I didn't have health care. I'm sorry. And it's such like a simple procedure too. I don't know why it should cost people that much money. Christina, in history, who would you say was one of the greatest leaders? I mean, in Canada? <laughs> like, um... Because I don't know all the leaders who ever existed. I'm trying to think. Most leaders suck. <laughs> um, I could probably tell you in Canada, but I wouldn't know, like... I wouldn't know who the leaders have been in, like, China or, you know... <laughs> and he said, Jagmeet. Okay, Jagmeet is the leader of the NDP party, but he's not the leader of our country. Um, actually, you know who is a really great leader? Our prime minister right now is Justin Trudeau. His father, Pierre Trudeau, was a really, really great prime minister. Um, he did a lot of things with uh, immigration. Um, if it wasn't for him, like my family wouldn't be here. Um, so he was really amazing for bringing like diversity and like immigration into Canada. Um, so yeah, Pierre Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. <laughs> um, yeah. I actually took, I, I hated history in high school, but I took a history course um, that was a year long in my last year of university and I really quite enjoyed it. It was called The Making of Canada. And uh, the first semester was really boring because it was like the old, like the beginning of Canada. You know what I mean? When they were doing like the fur trade and like be like trading beavers and stuff. And <laughs> we were learning about all of that. Like actually, if it wasn't for like the beaver fur trade and all of that, um, we literally would not have like we boosted our economy with that. That was like the beginning of Canada's economy. So it was, that was actually very important in Canadian history, but very boring. <laughs> um, and 
also we it was a lot you know it was very sad uh to learn about like uh, how the natives were treated and everything. Um, but then in the second semester, we learned more about, I guess, the last um, like century and stuff. And uh, it was pretty cool, like to learn about all of the like prime ministers and stuff that I totally locked out of my memory from high school. And uh, my teacher was so good in my second semester. He really made me like interested in what we were learning. Charles Williams said, sorry to interrupt the serious stuff, but I have to say, I love your main hands. <laughs> I'm going to need a print of your hands to compare to my ladylike hands. I love it. I have giant hands. I guess you can, if you want me to pick up my basketball. One second. Hey. Um, yes, they call me man hands Mayoni. Um, my basketball here i wonder if i can do it sometimes it, my basketball is dusty and it's like slippery but oh gosh it's falling out of my hands wait <laughs> i don't know if you can see that <laughs> um ball is life um, I love my man hands. Uh, I used to have guys, uh, there was, cause I played, uh, varsity basketball, um, at my university and there was guys in the football team who, when we would train in the like high performance center, which was like where all the varsity athletes would do weightlifting. There was guys in the football team who were like, dude, like your hands are massive. And I was like, yeah, they're like, I would ask you to compare hands with me, but like, I know yours are bigger and I don't want to feel emasculated right now. And I was like, fair, honestly, fair. Um, I was like, you do you though. <laughs> like just, oh God, I almost dropped it. You want me to teach you proper shot form? I won the award um, on my basketball team in high school for best shot form, best shooting form. Got to keep the elbow in. Got to keep it straight 90 degree angle. Put your hand on the side like that. And then you extend with one arm and you follow through. Welcome to basketball with Christina. Um, Jason, stop stealing my fans. What are you doing? But yes, maybe we'll do a live stream where I go play basketball. <laughs> Woo! Oh. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm pretty cool. I'm like, I played basketball and shit. Um, I really miss basketball. I wish I could play again, but being a varsity athlete was a traumatic experience. <laughs> um. Yeah. I think I was telling some of my patrons on a call the other day. I was like, I would have like weightlifting in the morning and then I would have to run to class. Like I'd weightlift at 6 a.m. And then I would run to class at like 8 a.m. And I would finish class by like 10 and I would have to like run back and do individual training. And then I would finish indies and then I would go and get lunch and then I would go to class and then I would have to like run from class to film so we would like watch game tape together as a team and we would like analyze game ta tape and then we would when we were done finishing analyzing game tape for an hour which i would zone out like i dissociated now that i know that like i have an issue with dissociation because of my like mental disorders um i realized that that's what i was doing because i would just like i don't even remember the film sessions genuinely i didn't listen like i would just sit there and like like i was like not even there um but then we'd have an hour of film and then we'd have two hours of practice. Um, so it would go right from film to practice. We'd practice for two hours, which was j literally just like fucking sprints and exhaustion. And um, then I would fit, we'd finish practice and I would get home and just be like dead. And I wouldn't want to do my homework. So it was just traumatic. And plus that I was being bullied by 
a lot of the girls on the team and the coaching staff hated me um, for no reason other than I'm just I'm just easily hated to be honest I don't I don't understand why maybe I'm just annoying um, I think it was because no one realized how bad my mental illness was and they thought it was just me being like lazy or I, I wasn't listening, but really it's just I was I didn't realize how much I dissociated in practice, um, which now that I know that it's I mean, it's nice to know that it like wasn't my fault. Um, but yeah, my coach used to yell at me so much because he was like, you never listen. and You're just a bad athlete. You're a horrible basketball player. I never should have put you on this team. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm worthless then. Um, but really, it wasn't my fault. Just no one felt like. Uh, they should check in on me, which also sucked. Um, I feel like you should put your your player's mental health above all. Um, because if you don't have like a mentally healthy player, then you don't have like a, a player who's like working at their best. And I think I was a really good basketball player, but I never got to show anyone that because of external reasons, you know, which sucks. Because I think I could have done really well in university basketball, but... Unfortunately, there was a lot of things um, that got in my way. If I ever do teacher's college, which I still am thinking in, um, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my group chat's going off telling me I need to end the stream. <laughs> no, they're, they're not telling me to end the stream. They're suggesting, uh, asking if I'm okay. Um, thank you, Andy, though. Uh, I'll probably end in a few minutes, but yeah. Um, I've always wanted to do a video on how horrible my experience was playing university basketball, but my biggest fear is that I'll get sued by the university or I'll get sued by um, the coaching staff or like whatever. So I think if I would ever do it, I would have to like not say what the name of the school is and not use anyone's real names which I wouldn't use any of the, my teammates' real names because, like, I respect their privacy. And, like, honestly, I, although they were, like, a lot of them were really horrible to me, I, like, I try to not, I try to not hold hatred in my heart for them. Um, and I hope that they've changed and grown as people. Um, but the coaching staff have absolutely no, like, I don't care about any other than one, one of the assistant coaches who I really loved. Um, all of the other coaching staff can suck my absolute ass. Like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Like I will out you, but I don't want to get sued. Um, someone said, didn't you also play a soccer in college? Yes, I did. I played two years on the, the basketball team and one year on the soccer team. Um, that was also a somewhat bad experience, but not because of like the players or like experience as a whole. It was because the way it ended was really shitty. Um, Lightning said, here's a tip. Your super chat is too empty. Oh, thank you, Lightning. You're so sweet. Um, thank you for all your super chats tonight. Um, and thank you to everyone else who super chatted. You're very sweet. Um, but yes, maybe one day I'll talk about my experience, but, um, I tried to tell a story from it recently and I started crying because it was just traumatic. It was like, imagine meeting your heroes. Like, if you could imagine meeting your heroes, like the people you looked up to and them hating you and bullying you for two years. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine, I don't know if any of, like, I'm any of your, like, idols or whatever. Could you imagine me, like, meeting you and being like, <laughs> ew, like... You know, imagine me bully. I mean, I, I couldn't bully anyone, but imagine that. That's like true trauma. These were like the people I was like, these were like my role models. These were my idols. And I met them and I was like, you people suck. <laughs> Some of them were nice. Um, the majority of them were not. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nick said, you can bully me. It's okay. Um, Nick, I made you a moderator. Um, yeah, that was a traumatic experience. Yeah. 
Yeah. And every time I like talk about it, it's like, I just, you know, imagine like just want, like, ba like begging people to just like, like you and they just won't like you. Nick, you got a wrench. The lesbian, the lesbian TM has a tool. Um, but yeah. Anna, have you written in the chat recently? Because I would make you a moderator if you've written, you wrote in the chat, Jesus Christ. Um, but don't abuse your moderator powers because I used to have moderators who would just like ban everyone. And it was quite, it was quite annoying. Because sometimes I like to see the hate comments, you know? As long as they're not like, if they're harassing people, hide them. But if they're not, whatever. Um... Hi, Amy J. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Andy, what are you saying? Wait, why too? There, Anna, I made you a moderator. <laughs> Nick said I'll ban myself, to be honest. If someone says something like really offensive or whatever, you can hide it. Um, you can put someone on timeout um, if they're being really annoying or whatever. Um, but other than that, uh, if it's something mean to me, I don't really mind seeing it. If someone calls me fat or ugly, I'm like. <laughs> um, Alex says, hey girl, just here to say hi, stay strong. Can't wait to chat with you. Hi, Alex. Hope you're well. Hope the puppies and the guinea pigs and the li do you, lizard. Do you have a lizard? I don't remember. I think it. I think it might be. But say hi all to all your petties for me. Oh, do 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 do. Um, I loved seeing in them them in their little Halloween costumes. Oh, late Ming. I'm sorry that you're anxious. Um. Basically, the the moderators right now are uh, Nick, Andy, Jason, Anna. Um, I think sometimes Evie's here. Evie is the head mod on my Discord. So Evie's sometimes here. I don't know if he had to leave. Um, but the rest of my mods are um, uh, some of my patrons who have been patrons for quite a while. So I trust them. Not that I don't trust all my patrons. It's just uh, I'm probably closest with, uh, uh, you know, people I've talked to for longer. <laughs> I think my last brain cell just threw herself into the sun. This is fine. Fax me too. Bye, Reese. Advice on how to survive panic attacks. Well, I'll let you know when I figure it out. Um, what I do when I'm having a panic attack, because I had one like this week um, that was pretty bad. Um, usually either I'll like put my feet on the ground. So that's a form of grounding. Put your feet on the ground. Um, I put my hands on my knees and I, I do something called that's called grounding which is you name something you can see, name something you can smell, name something you can taste, name something you can hear. So it's like bringing you back to reality. So you sit there, feet on the ground, hands on your knees, um, or you can also like put your head in between your knees, which is also a calming thing and breathe. And then you look and you go, okay, I can see my pillow over there. I can hear my computer heating up. I can, I can smell my sandwich that's right here. Um, I can now taste my sandwich that is right here. Um, and you just do that over and over again. I can see my sunscreen there. I can hear my dad walking downstairs. And you just keep doing that. And it helps you like ground yourself back into reality. And if that doesn't work, um, I like to do like breathing exercises, like breathe in for five, like breathe out for seven. Just try to like breathe it out 
focus on something else than what you're panicking about, if that's possible. Someone said, I heard that you can put like salt packets on your tongue. I haven't tried it yet, but I heard it helps people a lot. I've heard that like smelling salts or like like things you can smell can um help with anxiety and stuff. I've never heard about the salt on your tongue. Yeah, Nick said hot baths and sniffing peppermint. I have peppermint oil that I put on my neck for like headaches and like sometimes put on my temples. And it helps calm me down. Someone said, I hate panic attacks where you're hyperventilating really bad. Yeah, that's what happens to me. I just start like... Someone, uh, Megan Renker said, what do you think when black people say I hate white people and is it okay to laugh at it? Um, I think as long as you can like determine whether or not it's coming from a place of, because obviously like discrimination is never okay and you can discriminate against white people. Um, you just can't be racist against white people. So if someone's saying, oh, I hate white people, but they're coming out of a place of like, you know, frustration or they're doing it as a joke. I think you can take it with a grain of salt and like laugh at it. If it's actually coming from a place of like discrimination, then it's a problem. And you should kind of like ask a few more questions. Um, but I think a lot of the time, like the same way women say, oh, I hate men or like kill all men or whatever. It's coming from more of a place of like just anger and frustration um, from the way they've been treated by those like groups of people. Um, so I think it's important to determine and to differentiate between someone being discriminatory and someone just like making a joke or like letting out their feelings. Um, <laughs> Oh, Terrence Kutaka says, hi, Christina. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Terrence. Thank you so much for your super chat. Sorry, I didn't see it until now. That was my bad. Um, but I hope you're doing well, too. And Nicole Norelli says, I was bullied for trying to befriend a group of girls in middle school because I was otherwise friendless. I relate to your story. I'm so sorry for that. I swear, really, like, for the rest of your life, you, you like, hold that shit with you. It doesn't matter, like, when it happens. Um, it's just unfair that, like, people can make you feel that way. Like, you're not, you don't have worth or, like, you know, you're not deserving of, like, friendship and love. But I'm sorry you went through that and I hope you're okay now. Um, it sucks. It sucks that we can relate to each other, but, um, you're amazing and they suck. Um, I think I was saying something that I forgot. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, so yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's funny. Like I see stuff on TikTok all the time. Like recently there was a girl who was like, there was a girl, white girl who was being racist and a black girl made a response video to her and called her a snow roach. And genuinely, like, that was the funniest thing I had heard all day. And I commented on it and I was like, oh my God, a snow roach. Like, I was pissing myself. Like, And uh, I guess one of my followers uh, replied to my comment and said, wow, like, I thought you were different. Like, I thought you were different than laughing at something like this. And I was like, I'm sorry you thought that. 
I'm, I, you know, I'm sorry you projected this idea that I'm this great, wonderful, perfect person who won't laugh at someone being called a snow roach, but I'm not, I'm not, um, snow roach is hilarious like normalize calling racist white people snow roaches like that's hilarious to me um and the 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 amount of things that racist people call uh, black people is disturbing like through like throughout history and to this day and if someone wants to call someone being racist or a snow roach i will let them call them a snow roach uh i'm not going to be like you can't call them a snow roach like i don't know are they acting like a snow roach okay then we're gonna call them a snow roach um i like how someone's like is this stream still going on i should really leave though um um okay guys i think i'm gonna head out because this stream's been going on for uh two and a half hours um But I love you guys a lot. Oh, love you guys. I will um do another live stream. So ooh, ooh. Um, I'm going to do another live stream and make a gingerbread house sometime this month. So like before Christmas. So we'll make a gingerbread house together and, uh, yeah, that can be fun. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm going to try to make a lot of videos this month just to make up for like how little I've made videos recently. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And if I don't, um, sorry, uh, but I'm going to try, I'm going to really try and yeah. Love you all. Good night.